Hello everyone, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about a revolutionary technique in developing transgenic mice. As you know, mice are very much evolutionarily close to the humans and they are kind of considered tiny humans, one of the most important and very expensive model organisms for numerous diseases and biological processes. So one of the ways to study gene function in mice is to create transgenic mice which have the genes deleted. So one of the methods that have been used to create a lot of mouse models of diseases is the cree lox p system of creating transgenic mice. So what is it and how does it work? Let's discuss it today. So let's get started. So cree lox p system is based on bacteriophage P1. Okay, it is a bacteriophage which infects E. coli. Okay, it is a tailed fiber uh, phage and like other phages it has lytic and lysogenic life cycles. So in the lytic life cycle it basically infects the bacterium. It injects its double stranded DNA genome which is about 100 kb. It injects it into that and usually it makes starts making its own proteins and one important point here which is very important for our discussion is that the linear genome becomes circular if you can see the diagrams here the linear genome becomes circularized as soon as it enters the bacterial cell there is circularization now production of phage proteins packaging of phage assembly of phage particles host cell lysis and the cycle continues. So this is the lytic life cycle. I'm sure you are pretty much aware of it from class 12 onwards. Okay, if you are not, then this is a nice reminder. And the lysogenic cycle. Lysogenic cycle is where the conditions are not very appropriate for lytic life cycle. So the bacteriophage waits and watches. So what happens is there can be, for example, maintenance of the phage DNA inside the genome. There can be maintenance of the phage as a plasmid DNA inside the bacterial cell. And what will happen is sometimes it also integrates into the bacterial genome, which is known as the prophage stage. This is known for bacteriophage lambda also, very important model organism in phage genetics. So this is a pretty known feature. So it can, it can have three fates. So it can undergo the lytic life cycle. It can maintained as, it can be maintained as a plasmid and it can be maintained as a prophage. And in all these things, there is circularization of the phage DNA. Okay. Now, the circularization is maintained by this LOX P site, which stands for location of crossing over. in P1, so L, O, X and P, so that's how they made LOX P site. So LOX P site, these are a pair of inverted repeats. So if you look at the sequences here, these are the two inverted repeats here, 13 base pair repeats separated by an eight base pair spacer sequence. So if you see it's sequence here a t a a c t t it's basically the same sequence here so it is an inverted repeat and there is a recombination mediated by a recombinase called the cree recombinase which is also produced by the phage cree stands for circularization and recombination circularization and recombination Cree recombinase and it basically can lead to excision as well as integration of DNA. Okay, so this is how the structure looks like. This is the recombinase binding uh, end. So, and this is the eight base pair spacer and this is where cleavage occurs. So normal recombination, homologous recombination happens. So this is the structure of the Cree recombinase bound to its 34 base pair sequence, 2 13 base pair repeats and 8 base pair spacer. Now if the two repeats they are 
arranged in opposite orientation so they are pointing to opposite directions the cree recombinase actually mediates inversion of the in between dna segment so the the dna segment which is between these two lox p sites gets inverted and if they are in the same orientation so if they are pointing in the same orientation then it leads to excision of the dna segment and this is what we actually do majority of the time for creating transgenic mice we create uh, these direct repeats not inverted repeats to remove the dna segments that we are interested in removing and this is also sometimes called floxing where we are basically using the lox p site in the key system to remove a dna segment okay so let's look at the workflow of this technique so we have two mice strains these are transgenic mice which are made by the normal esl based transgenic mice system where we inject mice uh, esls with dna and then implant them into the blastocysts of the mice and then uh, grow them in a uh, surrogate mother and then look for transgenic mice so these are two transgenic mice that we have already created now the important thing here is here we have i hope you can see it here in this small font in the green are the two copies of the gene x that we are interested in removing this is on the one chromosomes and it also has one copy of the cree recombinase okay so it carries a foreign copy of cree recombinase the gene x which we are interested in removing it's already there it's present in the normal wild type mouse the only thing we have added is the cree recombinase and it is usually under a tissue specific promoter okay for example here is it is an albumin promoter in the other mouse we have created lox p sites flanking the gene of interest okay in both the copies it has no defects because the gene has not been removed but it has lox p sites flanking it now when we mate these two mice what will happen is it will carry one copy of the cree recombinase of course it, it because it is present on a different chromosome and out of these two copies it will carry the lox p site flanking fragment as well as the wild type fragment okay we are not done yet but that's the idea okay so this is after one generation okay so what we will do with this mouse we will take this mouse this is our next step we will back cross it okay we will back cross it to the original two copy of the lox p site mouse okay now here is what will happen so this is the cree recombinase and this is the lox p flanking the gene x and here we have two copies of the lox p flanking gene x now here in the offspring of this mating there will be two copies and both the copies will have gene x flanked by lox p sites and cree recombinase is also there now if you have a tissue specific promoter for example this albumin promoter it is active in liver in the liver it will produce cree recombinase and it will remove the gene and it there will only be lox p sites okay so now we can investigate what happens if in the liver this gene is removed now why is this important it is important to do because many of the genes that we are sometimes interested in uh, finding out the function of they lead to early lethality so it is important to activate them at the right point of time when the when the embryo has developed a little bit or in a specific tissue only so that it does not cause mortality okay so crelox p system is very useful for that for example this is one uh, application of the crelox p system so there is a debilitating condition which is called the de george syndrome or de george syndrome which leads to all sorts of abnormalities as you can see in this child uh, suffering from this disease it has led to the problems with ears cleft lip is there and also there are cardiovascular abnormalities so geneticists had found that there was a big deletion in chromosome 22 especially at q11 so long arm 11 at long arm 11 chromosome 22 of humans there was a deletion and this deletion was 1.5 
mega base 1.5 mega base is a huge region this is 1500 kb and it had 30 genes now how to identify which gene is actually causing this syndrome so the first step that researchers did which is reported in this paper is they created a mouse model for this disease so this is what they created by looking at the syntony so that is the order of the genes on different chromosomes so it turns out that human chromosome 22 is similar to mouse chromosome 16 okay and that's where they made the deletion they they deleted the homologous region and later they found out by removing chunks of this region using prelox p system systematically they found that actually it was one transcription factor called tbx1 t box transcription factor 1 and its haploinsufficiency which means it has to be present in two copies if it is present in only one copy it causes problems and that's what they found so this was unraveled only by creating a mouse model of this debilitating syndrome i would like to emphasize that this could not be done in cells or in any other model organism mouse is the right system to investigate this and this led to the discovery of tbx1 and its role in this syndrome okay so clelox p system hugely revolutionary technology and other technologies for example flp frt system they are also based on similar principle we will discuss them in one of the upcoming lectures and how to create other variants of transgenic mice but Creelox P system it really rocks as uh, many of the websites that you will visit regarding this will say it's a pretty remarkable system and a lot of progress has been made about our understanding of human diseases using this system so i hope you like this video I, I hope you found it useful and informative if you did like it please give it a thumbs up and do let me know about your comments or questions in the comment section below i will see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye